Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Uh, welcome to our home. This week's uh, lecture will be on leaders. Uh, you may think, well, <clears throat> I'm not a leader, so this thought really doesn't apply to me. However, I really disagree. At all times, but especially today, we all need to be leaders. My hope is that these next two lectures will help us on our way to doing so. So the question becomes, are great leaders born or are they created? I think it's much like the question that's asked about the presidency. Does the office make the man or does the man make the office? What makes people want to follow another person? <clears throat> what are the qualities that make up successful leadership? And what do we learn from them? <clears throat> Excuse me, as an Orthodox Jew, I would naturally look into the Torah and examine the greatest being of all, greatest leader, God Almighty himself. We see that the Torah is replete with descriptions of God and his being, the purpose of the Torah describing <clears throat> God's qualities is not to tell us who God is. After all, trying to describe God is really an impossibility since it's not possible for a finite being to comprehend an infinite creator. He defies any different definition. So why does the Torah attribute certain human qualities to God? Answer, to teach us who we should be, to instruct us as to which character traits we need to cultivate and which character traits we need to avoid. God gave us his Torah as a instruction manual so that he would be able to instruct us as how we should best react in all situations. A smart person learns from their mistakes. A brilliant person <laughs> learns from someone else's mistakes. So we study the Torah to learn what not to do and even better yet, what we should do. God does not react spontaneously with unbridled emotion. In fact, one of his greatest attributes is what we call erech apayim, long-suffering. He does not react immediately to the sinner when he sins, because it's God's hope that the sinner will realize the error of his ways and repent. We, too, should emulate God, but very often we allow our emotions to dominate our thoughts and then our actions. We first act and think later, many times, with disastrous results. Just as God exercises his attributes with calculation and forethought, so too should we learn to control our emotions rather than have our emotions control us. We want to exercise evolution, not revolution. So I think that we, should, that we would agree that though some people may be born with leadership qualities, everyone, Everyone needs to sharpen their leadership skills. What are those skills that we need to develop? So let's take a look at the list. Confidence. In order for someone to lead, they must inspire others with a deep sense of confidence. Confidence, not conceit. You as a leader must be able to give those who look up to you for guidance of belief that everything is going to work out, that you've got it. You need to create a feeling of camaraderie bringing people together. You need to build up your team, not yourself. It is not the power of the individual that wins. It is the power of the people. But at the same time, know your stuff. Knowledge is a wonderful tool. Knowledge is power. We see this scenario played out in the Torah when Moshe was on the mountain receiving the Torah, the Ten Commandments from God Almighty. The Jews sinned. While he was gone, they made the golden calf. God tell Moshe in the book of Exodus in the portion of Kisisa 32.7, Lech raid. He told him, go down. But why? The answer, because his people had sinned. It would seem that the only reason that Moshe was able to reach heaven was by standing on the shoulders of the nation. However, once they sinned, then he was forced to go down. You know, they tell a story of the holy Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov would pray every morning with his Hasidim, and the local farmers would also join in. It was his custom to stand in the silent prayer of the Amida for an extended period of time. The farmers would finish their prayers earlier, and they would leave. 
but his students would wait for him to finish his Amida, and then they would conclude their morning prayers together. It happened one day that all the Hasidim were hungry, and so they decided that they would all go home and grab something to eat, and then they would return well before the Holy Baal Shem Tov would finish his prayer. However, when they returned, they were surprised to find the Baal Shem Tov waiting for them. Later that day, one of the elder Hasidim asked the Baal Shem Tov why he had finished his prayer so early that day. Baal Shem Tov answered him with a parable. He said there was a man who saw a rare and beautiful bird on top of a tree, and he wanted to capture the bird, but he had no way of reaching it. So he had his friends stand on each other's shoulders, and then he climbed from one to another trying to capture the rare bird. Where before he could reach the top, the person on the bottom, thinking that his job <clears throat> was done, walked away. <laughs> Without the man on the bottom, the whole pyramid came crashing down. The man on the top could not reach his goal. So the Balshentov said to the elder Chassid, When I pray, my Amida, I stand on the shoulders of you, my students, and that is how my soul is able to soar in the heavenly realm. But today, when you all left, I had no choice but to go down, since it is you that are my ladder to heaven. It may be the leader who inspires and directs his followers, but it is his people that actually give him the power to lead. Following that logic, when trying to lead others, never, never talk about yourself. Don't even talk about them. Always refer to it. It is the situation at hand whatever it might be. The only question that should be addressed is not what is best for you or what is best for the person or people you are trying to lead. The only question that should be asked is what is best for it? It automatically removes all egos and emotions from the discussion. It allows for logic and reason to prevail, a neutral situation. Then there exists a possibility of peace, compromise, and success it. In addition, we learn a great lesson about leadership from Moshe, our greatest leader. It was he who led the children of Israel out of Egypt and guided them through the wilderness for 40 years. This was Moshe's instructions to Yoshua, Joshua, before he dies in the portion of Ayala. Moshe tells Yoshua that he must always lead the people and then they would be successful. Once at the Battle of Ai, Yoshua did not lead them into battle. And this was the only time that the Jewish nation was defeated during their conquest of the land. In that battle, some 36 men died. When a leader says to his troops, follow me, <laughs> his men will follow him to hell and back. However, when the leader says, pardon me, stays in the rear and says forward, he weakens their feelings of self-confidence and victory. This method of leadership, Moshe's orders to Yoshua, is still practiced today in the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. <clears throat> Officers lead their soldiers into battle, giving them confidence and making them a formidable fighting force, one of the best in the world today, leadership. On the other hand, Nelson Mandela was correct when he said, it is better to lead from behind and to put others in front, especially when you're celebrating a victory or whatever nice things occurred. However, whenever there is danger, ah, then you move to the front line. Then people will appreciate your leadership. Another trade honesty. In order to lead, one must have credibility. If your words can't be trusted, well, then others will follow your lead and they too will be unethical in their dealings, not only with you, pardon me, with others, but with you as well. As the old saying goes, your word is your bond. Again, we try to emulate God Almighty. If you take the last letters of the first three words of the Torah, Bereshus Bar Lukim, they spell the Hebrew word emet, truth. If you take the last letter of the last three words in the description of creation, Asher Bar Lukim Lasos, they also spell the Hebrew words emet, truth. So we see that God began and ended the creation of the world with the word emet, truth. Always be honest and transparent with people. Hopefully they will respond in kind, but don't depend on it.
Next, communication. Being able to communicate with others is a, is a key to leadership. In order for people to be able to follow, they must understand what the mission is. What is it that you expect from them? Being a good leader means being able to teach other people to do and how to react to all situations. KISS is an acronym for keep it short and sweet or keep it simple, stupid. Both of these ideas work, short and simple. I don't know why people think they have to make things much harder than necessary. Short and simple instructions blended with an ample amount of patience will always bear the most fruit. Patience hmm. is essential to being able to teach those that look to you for their leadership. Not everyone learns at the same pace, but many times those who take longer to learn, learn it better and retain it longer. Faster is not always better. It says in Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of the Fathers, chapter 5, Mishnah 12, Kasha lishma v'kasha la'abe, that a person is hard to learn, but hard to forget. His disadvantage is canceled out by his advantage. Being a good communicator is not just being articulate. It's also about being a good listener. I like the thought that the reason why God gave us two ears and only one mouth was to indicate to us that we should listen twice as much as we speak. In order to be a good leader, one must attempt to understand the people or person whom you are trying to lead. Many times it's not what a person has said that is important. It may be what they didn't say. A leader needs to watch body language and listen to tone of voice. They must demonstrate sincere concern and empathy. Sometimes all the people need is to be heard, to air out their thoughts or voice their grievances. They want your attention. They want to feel like you care. And, well, you should. Words from the heart and go to the heart. Compliment. I can't express just how important complimenting others is, especially to our children. I once complimented an employee for their work performance. Their reply to me was that it felt even better than a raise. We all want to feel appreciated. We all like to be complimented. However, there is also times when a leader must criticize. But the only way to make your criticism effective is to compliment. Compliment tw twice as much as you criticize. Also, when criticizing, always make sure that you begin the statements with a positive statement, if at all possible, a compliment. Then there exists the possibility that maybe your words will bring about your desired results. When reprimanding anyone, Always do it in private. You'll be much more successful. For one, you will not embarrass the other person, which may cause them to be even more argumentative. In addition, they don't have an audience to play to. They don't have to prove a point to anyone. It doesn't have to turn into a battle of egos. Following this advice, that the person that you are reprimand reprimanding huh, may actually listen and actually learn from your words. Positive attitude. This is one of the most essential qualities of a leader. A leader must believe in himself. He must see himself as a winner. No one, no one wants to follow a loser. Story told of the last hours of the Alter Rebbe's founder of the Chabad Lubavitcher movement. His grandson, whom he raised and who had become the third Lubavitcher Rebbe, that some upsetic was praying the evening prayer in the same room where his grandfather was lying. His grandfather listened to the sorrowful melody that his grandson was praying with. When the Tzemach Tzedek finished praying, his grandfather rebuked him. He said the famous Hasidic statement, Trach good will sein good. Think good and it'll be good. <clears throat> the Alter Rebbe went on to explain to his grandson that the world above is a reflection of this world below. When we pray with deep sorrow, we send sour, sorrow and misery up to heaven. When we are answered, that is exactly what we get back. However, we send our prayers up with joy and happiness. 
Then we receive joy and happiness in return. Ergo, think good, and it'll be good. If you don't believe in yourself, then no one is going to believe in you either. We see in the Torah in the beginning of the book of Exodus that when Moshe approached Paro, Pharaoh the first time, he was not successful. In fact, he made things even worse. But when he returned with a new sense of confidence, a positive attitude, he was very successful. Winners win and the losers lose. That's life. However, life is not always a reality. Many times, it's more about your own perception. It's very hard to knock down someone who has a positive attitude. Take the example of Henry Ford. Henry Ford went bankrupt five times, as did Milton Snadley Hershey, founder of Hershey Chocolates. Walt Disney failed numerous times before he was able to succeed. Strong leaders all have one thing in common, positive attitudes. They all believe in themselves. They don't give up. Failure for them is not an option. Their belief has the power and the ability to motivate not only themselves, but also others to follow them on their journey. The aphorism goes, if you don't succeed at first, then try, try again to stay understood. I think I'm going to stop here. And with the help of God, we'll continue next week with other attributes and how all of these attributes connect to all of our lives through our leadership. Again, may that help merit and bring in the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu quickly and in our time. I thank you all for listening and attending. Again, God should bless you and give you the leadership that you need to run your lives. Hopefully next week we'll tie this all up and show how it, again, becomes important to everyone's life. Thank you again for coming. Shabbat Shalom. Be safe, be happy, be healthy.